Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gothic Ministry. Your host, the minister, said first and foremost, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for all things that you have done, are doing, and will do. We thank you for all things, including your son who died for us on the cross, for our sins to be removed completely and once and for all. In your name we pray. Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So, there's a number of different kind of scriptures on here that I'll be uh, doing, but uh, we'll see how much I actually have time for doing, because I'm trying not to make this a two hour long video. So, to start this off, we're going to go ahead and go with Amos chapter 2, verse 9. So in Amos chapter 2, verse 9, we read, Yet destroyed I the Amorites before them, whose height was the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above. And his roots from beneath. So, for the next one, we're going to go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 29. So, Numbers chapter 13, verses 29, and also verse 32. So, in 29, we read, The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and in the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Hmm. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. So in that part we get two different things. The land that eateth up the inhabitants, the inhabitants thereof and the people that we saw there are men of great stature. So the first part there will be a different type of... Uh, Scriptural study for a different time. We're focusing on right now that men of great stature. Now for the next one is chapter 14, verses 6 through 9. So, Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 through 9. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Japhonah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. They spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land, and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So, the next one we'll be going to is Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. So, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 the Emons or Emims dwell there in, in times past. A people great and many and tall as the Anekims, which also were counted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. Now for Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 2. A people great and tall. The children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest and whom thou hast heard of, or thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? So Genesis chapter 14, verse 5. In the fourteenth year came Shedder Laomer and the kings that were with him, and smote Raphaims and the Ashtaroth and Karnaim and Zuzims and in Ham, and the Emons or Emons in Shiva and Karjathaim. And in, we all know that Ashtoreth is actually a Canaanite goddess who is the equivalent of a different Canaanite goddess, which is called Ishtar, which is a Babylonian thing as well, which is widely celebrated today in this day and age as Easter. Well, the origin, the original pagan's origin of this year, which we can find that Ashtoreth is, which is Easter, or Eastereth is, of course, the goddess of blood, war, and guess what? Fertility. So we can see Easter was celebrated even back in Genesis never been at all anything to do with God, his feast, or holiness, or, or the feast days. has always been a pagan thing. Next, we turn to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 11 and 13. 11, for only Og, 
king of Bashan, remained of the remains of the remnants of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits was the breadth thereof, after the cubit of a man. 13. And the rest of Gilead and Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto half the tribe of Manasseh, the region of Argab, with all Basham, which were called the land of giants. And then for the next one will be Second Sam chapter 21, verses 16, 18, and 20. Verse 16. And Eshbibad, Eshbinab, which be the sons of the giants, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass and weight, he, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. Verse 18. And it came to pass after this that there was a giant, there was again a battle with the Philistines of Gob. Then Sibichikai, the Husha, fight Slusaf, which was of the sons of the giant. And now, verse 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes four and twenty in number so twenty-four and he also was born to the giant so the question is where did these giants originally come from well we can start this in genesis chapter six verse one and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, and by sons of God, there is a whole teaching about this being, that the sons of God are those of the good sons of Adam. This is incorrect, completely false. This sons of God is the same sons of God that is in heaven. The stars of God or the angels of God are also sons of God, but they were created, just as Lucifer is a son of God, but is created. So therefore, angels are created sons of God, for which reason the Bible has in John 3.16, the only verse that says that Yeshua is the only begotten sons of, son of God, because Adam is a created son of God. The angels are created sons of God. So Yeshua is the only one, he's the only begotten son of God. So now that that is clarified, let's continue this. That the sons of God, in other words, the angels in heaven, saw the daughters of men, they saw them from the earth, that they were fair. Of course, the earth, on the earth, we have a bunch of beautiful women. So sure. So they saw that they were very fair and took them wives of all which they chose. So it is generally men who get to choose the women and the women get to say yes or get to say no. That's in scripture. But we don't have time to get into that. That's not the point of this whole entire scripture study. But, continuing on. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. So, the result of this here, of the sons of God seeing the daughters of men and coming down to this earth, and taking them for wives, and, of course, having coitus with them. This is the result. Verse number four. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. So we can see in this here that no time prior to this was there anything about giants. From Genesis chapter 1 through verse 5 up to verse 32, there is no mention of there being giants. However... It starts off in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, that they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men which were of known, or which were of old men of renown. So the giants that had a good name for themselves, or even a bad name, don't know. But these giants made a name for themselves, whether good or bad. But it wasn't until this time that there were giants on the earth. So at no time prior to this was there giants. But from this time on, there were giants. So this is the first origins of the giants. Now, let's go to the time after the flood. This would be the second origins of the giants. So, 
we all know that there was a guy named Samson who was under a Nazarite ship. And in Judges chapter 16, verse 20, we can see that uh, Samson, when he awoke out of his sleep and said, Will I go out as other times before and shake myself? And it was not that the Lord was depart from him, because during that time his hair was clipped. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Now, a lot of people could question exactly what this means, but if you actually know some what words mean without it saying the direct things, then you'll know exactly what he did. So in the prison house, Samson grinded. What do you think he grinded? Well, it wasn't metal, and um, it wasn't ceramic, and it wasn't cement. So um, let's put it this way. He was forced to have coitus with a lot of women. And being that God was with him, of course, his seeds would grow to be giants. And that wasn't his specific, his specific special case. So he did grind in the prison house. So there you go. That is the second origins of where giants came from. And that's why we had giants on this earth twice. Once before the flood and once after the flood. So there you go. There's your answer. And who's to say that giants are not still alive today? I am sure that there are still giants alive today. But anyways, that is the teachings of where giants come from. And that there are, in fact, at least were, in fact, giants. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. I appreciate the love and support. And as always, love and peace. Till next we meet. And Shabbat Shalom.